mention uh, a very special prayer is needed for Nancy. She's having a problem with recovery. Remember, she had COVID and she is in therapy right now and uh, is, is having struggles to, uh, to recover quickly enough. Henry is home and is, uh, he's, he's doing well. And then uh, we've got to remember Rachel's mom also. A couple more things that we'll do later. Rachel's mom is struggling with cancer. So, All right, we've been talking about the millennial kingdom that is coming on the earth. And we said the single most important thing other than the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ himself <laughs> ruling and reigning on planet earth is that deception has been replaced by truth. From the very time of the beginning in the Garden of Eden, the Millennial Kingdom, of course, is a restoration of back to an identic type state for the most part during the thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in Eden was a place where absolute truth was perfectly known. Adam and Eve both knew the word of the Lord and what he had given them uh, as far as what is obedience and what is disobedience. Uh, and they walked and talked with him in the Garden. We looked at all of this stuff in our previous couple of studies. But that presence of truth, an absolute truth with no deception, is part of what is going to be coming in the Messianic Kingdom when Jesus Christ, who is the truth, will be reigning. One of the things that is lost in today's world is the fact that truth is truth whether you believe it or not. Truth is established by the Word of God. Truth is established because it is God's Word and He is truth. And we have seen that and we'll remind ourselves of those things in a minute. A lie is still a lie even if everyone believes it. So it is not a matter of what other people want to say, but it's a matter of what says the Word of God. And that is why the careful teaching of the Word is what is absolutely necessary and why for all of us who are born again believers, we need the intake of Bible doctrine intake of the Word of God so that our minds are renewed and through that we can become Christ-like. Remember, lie detector tests can often be wrong. But the greatest lie detector test, the one that's never wrong, is this one right here. It's the Word of God. We're going to be looking at more of this in the Millennial Kingdom, but this is just a reminder of things that we looked at last time. By the way, the Bible Conference in Tennessee went well, but it's good to be home. Uh, it was great to be down there and share the Word. Uh, with Brother Redmond and his church. Uh, we had so many of our family down there at the same time frame, which made it even more special. But God and His Word equals absolute truth. Absolute truth means there is not negotiable. It is true whether anyone believes it or not, and truth equals reality. One of the things that, that we often want to miss is say, well, that's your opinion or that's your thought. And it may be, but that's human viewpoint. Divine viewpoint is never wrong, and it establishes reality. It says, all the way back to Exodus 34, 6, Then the Lord passed in front of him, that is Moses, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding, overflowing, we looked at this, overflowing in loving kindness and truth. Abounding in truth. Truth, emet, is the, is, the, is the Hebrew word. It comes from the word amen. When, when you say amen, for example, you're saying uh, that is true. I confirm that. I support that. That has just been stated. And the word truth there is from that very word. It means something is confirmed as true. It is true. It is an objective reality. Objective, not subjective. It is true because God says it is true. It is true because God confirms it as true. And that makes it absolute, non-negotiable. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. It doesn't matter what my opinion is. But what saith the Lord? Just to help us, remember what is objective. Objective means it is external to me. It's not, I don't, I don't confirm something is true because I believe it. But it is confirmed as true because it's in the Word of God, and therefore, I believe it. You know, so it used to be said a long time ago, uh, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. <clears throat> That's wrong. God said it, that settles it, I believe it, Amen. is the way to say it. Truth exists independent of any thought or opinion of either angel or human. 
Truth is defined by God and is revealed in the Word. That's why, in contrast, the, the word emuna, which comes from the word for truth in the Hebrew, speaks of faith. This is where that which is absolute truth now becomes the truth that I believe, that is the subjective side of it. Not that it changes the truth, but I have accepted it as truth. I have been persuaded that it is God's truth within my heart, and it is confirmed by that. The person is persuaded that the truth God has given is, in fact, true, and I accept it. In today's world, everything wants to be opinion. Your truth is not my truth. Well, from the human viewpoint, that may be a fact, but not from the divine viewpoint. It rejects the person who accepts the truth is rejecting all other ideas, which are illusionary. We are rejecting reality. Uh, we are rejecting falsehoods for reality. We looked at this also, but there's two models of truth that are effective in the world today, that are ineffective in the world today. Model number one, which is the one that every believer who is grounded in the Word of God should follow, which is truth is defined by God. It is revealed in His Word. It is objective. It is absolute. It is non-negotiable. That is the divine viewpoint. But the common one that you see, the one that Satan brought into the Garden of Eden when he said, Have God said, and you shall not die, contradiction of the Word of God, is truth is now defined by the individual. I get to define my truth. You can define your truth. And we don't have to submit to the Word of God. That's why the, the, uh, the congressman whose name I can't remember now, whenever somebody said, you think this thing of abortion uh, is, is what God would have you to do, and his response was, this Congress is not concerned about the will of God. And that's very true. That's the way they look at it. It is their thought. They're operating by human viewpoint. But always remember this. The human viewpoint, which is the cosmic system viewpoint, is the satanic viewpoint. That's why the believer has got to inundate their minds with the Word of God. Inundate their minds with the Word of God. You cannot do that if you're not paying attention, if you're not listening, if you are not studying. That is why in Bible class you need to be as focused as you can possibly be focused. We even have notebooks there, pens and pencils, whatever a person needs, to help us focus our minds on the Word of God. On into the Scripture, Deuteronomy 32, 4, He is the rock. His work is perfect for all His ways of justice, a God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is He. Psalm 31, 5, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have ransomed me, O Lord God of truth. The Lord Jesus Christ quoted the first part of this verse whenever He gave up His spirit on the cross. O Lord, God of truth. You see, listen to me. If we are not in the Word, we're not looking in truth. We will believe lies. We will be deceived. Psalm 119, 60. The sum of your Word is what? Truth. The sum of your Word is truth. Every one of your righteous ordinances is everlasting. Now that brings out another point of truth. And that is, truth is unchanging. It is everlasting. And it will not change. Isaiah 65, 16. Because he who is blessed in the earth will be blessed by the God of truth. And he who swears in the earth will swear by the God of truth. If you want to get sideways with a bunch of, of unbelievers, just tell them about absolute truth. We have people who are believers that we give them absolute truth that will say, well, I don't like what that preacher says. I think I'll leave that church. If it came from here, I simply was giving you what God had given. Amen? It is not passing opinion on me. Now, if it's not in the book, well, then that's different. But if it's in the book, what you're doing is saying, I'm smarter than God. I am God. Well, that's the sign of the Antichrist to declare you're God. Amen? Amen? Go with me to Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah 
Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah is right in front of Malachi, which is just before the book of Matthew in the New Testament. Zechariah chapter 8. Verses 3 through 8. We're talking about the millennial kingdom. We've talked about deception being replaced by truth. Look, this speaks of the coming millennial reign of Christ. It says, Thus saith the Lord, I will return to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Stop. We've studied this. We're going to go into it in more detail. But the Lord Jesus Christ himself is going to return with the second coming. The whole campaign of Armageddon happens. And then, after a 75-day period, then comes the millennial reign of Christ. And it says he will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Remember, we have looked at the highest mountain that is going to be on planet Earth at the time frame, where an earthly Jerusalem is going to be, uh, will be there in the land of Israel, probably the what is known as the Temple Mount. But look, then Jerusalem will be called the city of truth. Why is it called the city of truth? Because the God of truth is reigning there, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the mountain of the Lord of hosts will be called the Holy Mountain. That's that mountain that we've studied that is going to rise up. On top of which will be the earthly Jerusalem. It will be the headquarters for the reign of the Messiah and will also going to be the temple that we have yet to study. So thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and women will again uh, sit in the streets uh, uh, of Jerusalem, the city of truth, each man with his staff in his hand. And the streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls playing as in the streets. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, If it is too difficult in the sight of the remnant of this people in those days, will it be too difficult for my sight, declares the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I am going to save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. And I will bring them back and they will live in the midst of Jerusalem. And they will be my people and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. So it is called the city of truth. God is going to be bringing the remnant of the Jewish people back into the land. They will be there in that Jerusalem, but they will also be on the assigned land that we have looked at under the Abrahamic covenant. And all of that, though, the entire world will be a world of truth. You won't be able to turn on your television and watch CNN because they will be permanently out of business. I know that will upset you. Maybe there will be a new CNN, the Christ News Network. I, I like that one. That's better than the Communist News Network that we now have. Amen. Amen. A kingdom of absolute truth. Deception and lies are at an end. And only reality, only truth is taught. Remember, people who don't believe the Word of God, who don't believe the truth, are living in a false world. They are living in unreality. Now let me ask a simple question. If you have people who mentally are living in unreality, what do we call them? It starts with the C and ends with a lot of the rays in the middle. They're crazy. They're crazy. People, listen, people who do not follow the Word of God at one level or the other, are crazy because they're living in a false world. That's one reason why it's so challenging to try and get the truth into people's minds because it is an outbreak of reality in the world of deception. That earth and the new Jerusalem is going to be called the city of truth. We've looked at other names. When we've studied the mountain. It is there and there alone where absolute truth is going to come. Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. Verses 2 through 4. Isaiah 2, beginning in verse 2. Now it will come about that in the last days, now in this case, the last days is referring to the thousand year reign of Christ. The mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains. We've studied this. And will be raised above the hills 
and all the nations will scream to it, and many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of, of, of Jacob, that he may teach us concerning his ways, that we may walk in his paths, and the law will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and he will judge between the nations and render decisions for many peoples, and they will hammer their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning nuts. Nation will no longer lift up a sword against nation, and never again will they learn more. So what is happening is that the Lord Jesus Christ himself is the main teacher. The teacher where people from around the world will be coming to hear the truth. Now it's going to spread out from there. But look what it says in Isaiah 65. I'll put this on the screen. In mercy the throne will be established and one will sit on it in truth. In the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking justice and hastening righteousness. That is where he's judging between the nations. It will always be done in truth. Remember, just because it's in the millennial kingdom doesn't mean that there may not be potential disagreements with people who are in their human body. That will still be there. So part of the judging is it will always be right. It will always be correct. And there will never be any error. And the Lord's people also will be involved in Isaiah 10, 20 goes on to say that it shall come to pass in that day the remnant of Israel will depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. So not only, just like we looked at those two Hebrew words, not only is it the fact that there is this absolute truth that exists, but the people will learn to live in truth, and especially the Jewish people, and that's something we have yet to study, will be absolutely living out truth. That brings up this question. How are we doing? We're learning truth. We're learning doctrine. You're in your Bibles. We have all the other studies and things that are available for you. But, are we living it out? Just as these people will be living out the truth in the coming kingdom. Are we doing it today? If you want to experience a little bit about what it is to be in the kingdom of God and how good it's going to be, learn the truth and live it. And you're experiencing it. Uh, Jeremiah 33, 6, Behold, I will bring in health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. An abundance of truth. Habakkuk 2, 14, The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. No one will not know the truth. Go with me to Psalm 85. All of this becomes very real in our lives when we have to make decisions. When we decide about our future, when we decide about any particular thing that is going on, the question is, are we going to base our decision on truth or on error? Are we going to base it upon the divine viewpoint or the human viewpoint? That always is in front of us. And we have to recognize that God's viewpoint often conflicts with our preferences. So we have to make sure that what we want and what God wants lines up together. Always seek His face. Always seek His word. But here's what's going to be happening in the Millennium Kingdom. Psalm 85, verses 10 and 11. says, Loving kindness and truth have met together. How have they met together? Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the Millennial Kingdom, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. That's a description of the Millennial Kingdom. Now look, truth springs from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. Truth springs from the earth. Now wait a minute. I thought this was the place of the cosmic system. It is now. But what is it going to be in the millennial kingdom? And ultimately on into eternity. It is the place of truth. Truth will spring forth. The presence of the teaching of the God of truth, the Lord Jesus Christ, will be there. Will be present. 
And the reality of what truth is will be abundant. By abundant, it speaks of the fact that there will be no deception allowed. No deception in anybody's mind. Satan himself, of course, is locked up. The demons are locked up. All there is is truth. He is teaching and guiding all people into truth. But in addition to that messianic teaching, his people will be going around the world and teaching. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 5. Now this is where it kind of gets exciting for all of us. What are we going to be doing for all of this time? Well, although this speaks of the Jewish people, Isaiah 12, And in that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call on His name, make known His deeds among the people, make them remember that His name is exalted, praise the Lord in song, for He has done excellent things, let this be known throughout the earth. Give thanks to the Lord. He is making His deeds known among the people. Who is speaking here? And it's if you're back to verse 1, then you will say on that day, I will give thanks to the Lord. This is speaking of the Jewish people and part of their work in encouraging the rest of the world in their knowledge of the Lord and in the training. Go with me to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Israel was always called to be God's witness. They have failed that through the centuries, more times than they succeeded in. But in the millennial kingdom, they will fulfill their full calling as a nation. It says, Isaiah 43, verses 10 through 12, You, that is Israel, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before me there was no God formed, and there will be none after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and there is no Savior beside me. He says, you are my witnesses. Who is the you? The nation of Israel. The witnesses, those who are declaring the truths that He gives here, that there is no God beside me. He teaches them that you may know and believe me, and then they will go forth and teach from there. Look over in Isaiah 58. Are you with me, sir? Amen. Isaiah 58. One thing I don't like about new Bibles is it's hard to turn the page. Isaiah 58 and verse 8. The Lord speaking of the nations, that your light will break out like the dawn, and your recovery will speedily spring forth, and your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. As Israel spreads out in the nations, among the nations, in teaching the word of God, then what about us in the church age? What about us? Those that like to teach the Word of God, those who are skilled in teaching, those who have the spiritual gift of teaching the Word of God, are we just going to be sitting back and leaning on our thumbs and saying, I can't wait for a thousand years it's over so I can have something to do? I don't believe so at all. The Lord has gifted all of us in the church age with spiritual gifts, and many of those gifts, I believe, if you're gifted now, they will be utilized then. Since the church age believer, who is the overcoming believer, will be ruling with Christ, it's a logical assumption, and I have to say it is simply a logical assumption. I can't take you through scripture verse for that. A logical assumption that we're going to share in his teaching. If he is the one teaching, as we have seen, and Israel is going to be engaged in spreading the word, we will also be there. Now remember that during the Millennial Kingdom, there are going to be people who are born in their natural human bodies. We've studied that. We'll look further into it later on when we've looked it up. They, those that will be born during that time frame, and even some of those going into the kingdom, as we have studied, are going to need to believe in Jesus Christ for eternal life. 
But that's just the beginning. They also have to be disciples. To be disciples so that they will become Christ-like, just as we have to be disciples today. Remember that the beginning of eternal life is where you receive eternal life. However, what happens from there? We have to grow into Christ's likeness. It'll be the same during the millennial kingdom. John 14, 6. Remember, Jesus is the definer of truth. You know this verse, but look it up anyway. John 14, 6. What did Jesus say? Okay, you're quoting it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He is the truth. He defines truth. He is the one who is going to be ruling. Can you know that truth today? And can anybody tell me what John 17, 17 says? How does a person grow in the Lord? Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. That word will be the living word of God, ruling during the millennial kingdom, but he speaks through his word. This Bible will be there. The same thing you have in your hand today will be there, and it will be taught, and it will be understood. Are there going to be special classes? I don't know. But I can just imagine what it would be like to hear somebody say, Paul is teaching Romans 3 o'clock today. I think I'd be there. How about Isaiah? It would be wonderful. But truth is what God says it is, and that's what I'm trying to drive home today. The Word of God, the Bible, is total truth. Psalm 119, 160 says, The sum of your word is truth. That's why if we ignore this, the only other option is lies. If we ignore this, we will not know truth. Listen. Your mind is going to think on something. Just trying to say, I'm not going to think that way, leaves a vacuum. In that vacuum, something is going to fill it. And even though you may change your thought about this, something else from the cosmic system will just come in and take over. That's why we are transformed by the renewing of the mind. Amen? Amen. We have to get the Word of God into our heads. That's one reason why, of course, you cannot do it independent of the local church. You cannot do it independent of a pastor teacher because God designed it that way. One of the things that we have is our own selves to be in the Word of God and read it and study it for ourselves. But we also have to be in Bible class. We here at Westside, at the Free Grace Bible Institute, also have plenty of other things to help guide you into the truth of the Word of God. Listen, John chapter 8, look at it. John chapter 8. And these same principles that apply now are going to apply in the millennial kingdom. But John chapter 8, beginning in verse 31 and 32. Verse 32 is one that a lot of people love, but they forget verse 31. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, now stop, they had received eternal life. What did he say next? I'm glad you're going to be in heaven. That's all you need. Did he say that? No. If you continue in my truth. Stop. Now they had started in his truth. And that word continue is a good translation. They had started because they had believed in him for eternal life. They were listening to him and they were starting the path of discipleship. But he says if you continue. If you make it a lifestyle pattern. Of Continuing in His Word, and His Word is truth, then you are truly disciples of mine. Not just a born again child, but a disciple, a learner, a follower. And then, 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 contingent upon verse 37, then you will know, or 31, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I don't know about you, but I've been into places like rescue missions and I find 832 plastered on their walls. You'll know the truth, the truth will set you free, then they proceed to go about teaching you psychology and 12 steps and every other false that there is. They don't know anything about 31. 
It is only as we continue, we make it a lifestyle pattern of being in His Word, that we will know the truth. We will be free from human viewpoint. Jesus is saying, if you continue in my Word, that's this. That's why you can't do it independent of it. No need to even try. If you say, well, I'm, I'm praying. Now, that's, that's the one that will get me here today. Well, I'm not reading the Bible, but I'm praying. If you're not in the Word, you're out of fellowship, you don't even know what to pray for. Your prayers are going to go higher than the top of your head. So what is God's target? What's God's target? In your mind. He desires for everything you, for, for, for you to experience in time the freedom that comes from knowing the truth. The truth. Stop trying to define things by human people. It is the Word of God and the Word of God only that brings you freedom. Whatever it is in your sin nature that is tying you down, the freedom is the Word of God. You don't have to go out to some classes and sit around with a bunch of people and say, oh, my name is and I'm a look. Let me tell you something. To identify yourself as something that you're not is to lie. Well, I'm an alcoholic. Not according to the Word of God. You are a newborn in Christ. Look at Romans 6, 7, and 8. Go we'll see it for yourself. That is not who you are. Stop identifying as that person and start identifying as who you are in Christ. Because that is the truth. And there you will be free and no other place. The coming kingdom reign of Christ is going to bring the greatest freedom man has ever known. Because it is only for truth that they will know that. The wisdom that comes from it. The greatest way you can experience a little bit of the millennial reign now is to become a disciple. Then you will know the truth. You see, a lot of times Christians don't even realize that they're in mental bondage to the world's thinking until it is confronted by the Word of God. And there's where a lot of times we have problems, isn't it? We've seen it right here at Westside on multiple occasions. We say, here it is, right here from the Word. Here it is. I don't like what that preacher's preaching. I'm out of here. God, see you later. What you're saying is, I don't want to know the truth. Well, that's your de that's your definition. Oh my goodness, that's your interpretation. Stop it. It's amazing. I can read it straight to a person, right from the Bible, and read it right to them, and they'll look right at me and say, Well, that's your opinion. Well, that's my opinion. I just read it. There, you read it. God's truth. Amen? Yes. Amen? God's truth into the mind is where He wants it to be. That's your goal. That's my goal. My goal as your pastor is to do everything I can to get this truth into your head. Let's remember that. And let's work that together. We'll have to pick up here last time, the next time. I didn't get where I wanted to go, but that's not a good thing. Father in heaven, thank you for this all too brief uh, time to recognize who you are, to recognize and be reminded once again of the fact that you are the one that defines truth. There is no deception in you. And the sum of your words is truth. And the only way we can be sanctified, set apart for you to become Christ-like, is by the means of the truth. And it is only as we continue in your word to make it a central part of our lives will we be set free from human viewpoint. So Father, I pray for all of us, all of us, beginning with me, through everyone seated here, and everyone online, that will evaluate our attitude for the word of God and renew our determination to continue in the truth so we can know the freedom that you long for us to have so then we can go on to be rewarded in the coming kingdom.
in the name of the precious name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, church, we've got.